Good evening. Welcome. I want to thank you for being here tonight. My name is Bridget Ryan. I'm the president of the Alexander County Public Education Foundation and a member of the school board here in the county. And I'm so excited to have you here tonight. This is so much more like normal than we've had in a couple years. So thank you. Tonight's event is an annual fundraising event to help provide funds to the Education Foundation. The Education Foundation was chartered in 2009 with a mission to provide resources and support to the Alexander County Schools, to develop students with broadened life skills and educators with an increased passion, thereby enhancing and enriching the future of the community. Tonight, I would just like to introduce a couple boards that are with us uh, that make tonight's event possible. The first one is the Alexander County Board of Education. And if you're with us tonight, if you'll please stand and remain standing till I get through the list of names. Our chairman is David Odom. Vice Chairman Matt Cooksey. Scott Bowman. Marty Loudermilk. Ramey Robinson. And Harry Shrum. Thank you all. The next board that makes this event possible is the Alexander County Public Education Foundation. And I would like to introduce a few of the members that we have on that board. And the vice president is Misty Oxentine. Please stand. Treasurer Dennis Smart. Secretary Dana Benfield. Phil Eichard. Gordon Knight. Ramey Robinson. And Dr. Jennifer Hefner. Thank you. At this time, I'll take a moment to introduce uh, Reverend Jamie Steele. He's the senior pastor at East Taylorsville Baptist Church for tonight's invocation. I just want to start out by saying uh, congratulations to all, all of our inductees. I don't know Gene that well, but um, Larry Yoder was filling me in on, on his sports career and his association with Alexander County. Just want to say congratulations to you. Uh, Bobby Brown, uh, he probably don't remember me, but I remember him. We went to Hidnight elementary school together and I watched Bobby Brown play basketball and football there. Congratulations, Bobby. I wish you nothing but the best. And uh, Mickey Marie and my dad were good friends growing up. I appreciate Mickey coming by our church probably about 10 years ago. I don't know if you remember this or not, Mickey, but talking to me about you and my dad playing at Town Park and the Mill Hill and some of the legal troubles y'all get. No, you didn't get any legal. You never got caught, did you? You never got caught. But uh, congratulations to you, Mickey and Joel Harbison. I love you, brother. Me and Joel go way back. Um, we've been known to debate a little bit because we have differences and some opinions here. But Joel, Joel's been a, been a real blessing to my life. Uh, he helped our family out about four years ago. I'll never forget it. Appreciate that. And when I was 20 years old, I had to use his services. And Joel told me something that's private in his office. It really helped me a lot. It really did. I've never forgot it. And I'm happy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, he told me after I handed him a check, so, uh, but really, I, I love you, brother, and really appreciate you, so let me, and I, I would say this, you know, I'm a pastor, and what can bring people together other than like a church or sports? Aren't we blessed here in this small town? And, uh, but all our inductees, I just pray God continues to bless your life. Let's pray together. Father, so we come to you in prayer. We want to thank you, Lord, that we live in this small town. Uh, Lord, it is a blessing to live here. I pray that we not take, uh, take these things for granted. And uh, Father, I want to thank you for our school board, our school system. Uh, Lord, uh, pray that you'd bless our, uh, this school year. Um, Father, I'm a product of the public school system of Alexander County. Loved every minute of it. Lord, I never had a bad teacher, never had a bad ball coach, even though I was a bad teammate at times and a bad student. Father, I've been blessed to grow up here in Alexander County and love this place. Father, these inductees, Lord, uh, I pray that you would, that they'd be honored tonight. Lord, thank you for the skills that you've given them, Lord, during their, their life here, uh, playing ball, but also, Lord, since then. And Lord, all these men have been very successful. And I pray that you continue to bless them and help them, uh, Lord, in ways that only you can. And Lord, many of them have touched my lives, and I'm a better person because of it. And Father, I pray that you should be honored and glorified through all that's said and done tonight. And we want to thank you so much for Jesus. And it's in his name we pray, and all of God's people said together, amen. Thank you very much. Dr. Jennifer Hefner, Superintendent of Alexander County Schools, is with us tonight to share some information of how this 
the grants that we uh, give to teachers, how they support the students and teachers of our system. Good evening. I too want to say officially welcome. And on behalf of the Alexander County Board of Education and all school system employees, I uh, am just so glad that you are here celebrating the 2022 Sports Hall of Fame. I feel very fortunate to have all of you with us this evening. It is the most normal uh, gathering that we have had in some time. And your attendance and participation in this evening's event supports teachers throughout this school system. As I'm sure you know, great teachers are always looking for new ways to expand their instruction and engage their students. Innovative teaching is important, but it can also be expensive. And oftentimes, teachers find themselves using their personal finances to support their teaching efforts. Luckily, through the Alexander County Public Education Foundation, funding is made available for a variety of educational initiatives. Grants are made available each year to teachers who want to help their students and expand their instructional practices. Teaching grants can fund professional development, classroom enrichment, school supplies, field trips, and almost anything else that goes into bettering the quality of education. During the November Board of Education meeting, 18 Education Foundation grants were awarded. These grants varied in focus from things such as slump mold with clay slaps. I have absolutely no idea what all that meant to life skills supporting and, excuse me, life skills supplies to promote independent living for special education, a greenhouse once again, and even Bebot Lalu Robot Ruby. Again, those creative titles, I don't always know exactly what they are, but we had 18 really, really excited teachers. Again, these grants have been made possible through the Public Education Foundation and the support of individuals like you. I cannot express the gratitude that I feel this evening. The opportunities offered through the Education Foundation's teacher grants truly impact learning and instruction in Alexander County. So again, welcome and thanks to all of you. Good evening. Uh, I'm Misty Oxentine, and I'm going to introduce the Sports Hall of Fame Selection Committee members. Please stand. Larry Oder, Chairman. Dennis Smart, Treasurer. Bridget Ryan, Secretary. Alvin Burke. Kay Wilson Hammer. Mike Millsaps. Jean Price. Rick Gilbert. Sheena Holler. Darren Hayes. And Jonathan Watts. Let's give them a round of applause. We also want to thank the Alexander County Schools for their corporate sponsorship. They have sponsored this event from the beginning. Let's give them a round of applause. Another sponsorship we receive comes from the Johnny Bruce Education Foundation Memorial Golf Tournament. Our first golf tournament was in 2019. Each year it has been a huge success helping us to raise money for our teacher grants. We would also like to thank Brushy Mountain Golf Club and McClendon's Restaurant, along with Joe Ferguson, Jeff Sharpstein, and Hall of Fame member Jeff Eisenhower. Here are a list of our bronze sponsors. The next slide is our silver sponsors, along with the pictures of the top three teams from this year. And the final slide is our gold sponsors. Thank you to all the teams and whole sponsors who made our golf tournament a success. It is my pleasure to introduce the Chairman of the Sports Hall of Fame Selection Committee, a member of the Alexander Board of Commissioners, and a longtime supporter of Alexander County Schools, Larry Yoder. Well, it's going to be a fantastic night. Got a lot of great inductees. 
And I couldn't get by without saying this. How about them cougars? <laughs> but I did want to be a, a little more serious here for just a minute. The other part's serious also. But I think it's vitally important. I read on Facebook here a couple of days ago when people were talking about the Sports Hall of Fame and how people were nominated, how they were inducted, who voted on them. And we're going to give you some information here tonight so that you'll know what that is. I feel like that you folks need to pass the word on. And it's vitally important for this thing to continue so that all, everybody will know what they need to do and how to do. And that is to get the information and then get it through the school system at the central office. And I will, I will read that in just a minute. But I really want people to work hard. We as the board, as the Sports Hall of Fame board, we do not nominate anyone. We look at the criteria that is sent into us, and from that criteria that is sent in, into us, then we make a decision, and we nominate them, and we vote on them to be inducted to your Sports Hall of Fame. So I want to make sure that whenever you leave here tonight and you go out, and in the next year, that you take this information with you, and you find those people that are so vitally important in the sports world of Alexander Central and the other schools that were here in Alexander County at one time. And I think if we educate our population and educate the people that follow sports, then we'll get more and more and more nominees because that's what we need to make this a success and to take care of the scholarship program for our teachers here at Alexander County. But the purpose of the Alexander County Sports Hall of Fame is to recognize and perpetuate the noteworthy sportsman traditions of Alexander County by honoring and memorializing individuals who have made extraordinary contrib contributions to sports traditions in Alexander County. Now, in order to be nominated, there's a couple of things you need to do. A candidate must meet the following criteria. The candidate must be or must have been a resident of Alexander County for at least five years. The candidate must have been an active participant in the sportsman activity for at least four years. The candidates must be of good character and reputation. The candidate must have graduated from high school at least 10 years prior to the nomination. At least 10 years prior to the nomination. While a citizen of Alexander County, the candidate sportsman achievements and or contributions must have been recognized countywide as enhancing the sports activity he or she represents. All candidates that shall be considered without discrimination on the basis of race, religion, sex, age, handicap, or national origin. And that's important to understand that. And you can find this information. We'd really like for you to, if you have candidates that need to be nominated, we'd really appreciate it that uh, you do that. But the Sports Hall of Fame applications are available at the Alexander County Board of Education or on the, the district website at www.alexander.k12.nc.us. Under the community tab, the section is Alexander County Public Education Foundation, and the form can be found in the middle of the page. And we feel like it's very, very important, and we'd like for you to do that and make sure that uh, we get some more nominees and we'll have more people inducted into the Alexander County Sports Hall of Fame. And at this time, <clears throat> I'd like to introduce or, or call attention to the people that have been inducted into Ale Alexander County Sports Hall of Fame members. The 2012 class, if you're here, please stand and remain standing until I go through this and we'll give everybody a standing uh, an ovation at that time. 2012, Heath Boss. This was the original class, 2012. Heath Boss, Harry Gant, K. Wilson Hammer, Thurman Tigg, David Elder, Pat Ganey, 2013. John Gilreath Sykes, Scooter Gritton, 
Dave Jolly, Rafer Thomas, Glenn Wilson, and Rex White. 2014, Gary Lale, Angela Pennell Faust, Richard Mash, Gary Walker. 2015, Mitzi Davis, Robin Harris, the guy that can talk for three days and three nights and never take a breath, trust me. <laughs> 2015, Sheena Bowman Holler, Chris Kite, Edwin Squirrel Thomas. 2016, Mr. Jeremy Fortner, Jerry Ray Fox, Karen Setzer, Rick Sherrill, and Van Tarleton. 2017, Reba Hefner Bolick, Laura Thomas Laws, Jim Poole, and this one I'm really proud of, A.Y. Yoder. 2017, also, Coach Dale Yunt. 2015, a guy that could hit a softball 400 miles before they started to determine how far it really went. Eford Gwaltney from Stony Point. Jeff Eisenhower. Jim St. Clair. Coach Richard White. Ronnie Williams. 2019, Elaine Setter Bolick. 2019, Mr. Jeff Fox and his parents are here tonight if they'd stand, Jerry. I can't see and don't know where yet, but they're here tonight and we appreciate you all being here. Richard Gwaltney, <coughs> Harold Odom Sr., better known as Boots, and Stan Thomas. The 2020 class, Connie Elder Bryant, Johnny Chapman, Ernest M. Goodson Jr., and Jimmy Lewis Robinette. Let's give all those folks a big hand, guys. Thank you all very much. We appreciate those attendees who have been inducted in. We, we really appreciate you being here tonight and showing your support for this uh, worthwhile organization. Now, some of these guys on here that we're going to induct tonight, I know them. I know a little bit about Gene Chapman, not much. You know, I know he used to be a lineman for Crescent Electric. No, uh, yeah, I believe it was, I don't remember now. But they're out of business down there, it's Energy United. But he worked for an electrical company, liked to climb poles back in the day. But Gene Chapman was also a coach. And I had the distinct honor of coaching with him when our boys were 13 years old and we won the state championship, the state Western North Carolina Babe Ruth Championship. And Gene and Robert St. Clair and I and a bunch of mamas took the kids to Alabama. We had a wash team that wore red, jack red shirts and we tried to coach those boys through winning in Alabama. And let me tell you something, we ran into a thunderstorm in Alabama. We, I never seen boys so big in all my life and I thought our kids were big. These guys come out about 20 years old. And Gene's looking over at me and I'm looking over at him. I said, hmm, what have we got ourselves into here, you know? But it was a great trip and Gene's an outstanding individual and I'm glad to see that he's been uh, elected into the Hall of Fame. Mickey Marie, I know Mickey, I never saw him play, I just know him as a pastor. Known him for a long time and know his family and uh, everything. A good, good man and glad to see that he's been inducted and uh, it's, it's great to have him here and I know he's got a tremendous amount of family here to support him. And Joel Harrison, what can you say? Uh, you know, uh, I'm not gonna say anything. Uh, anything that I say may be held against me in a court of law and uh, you know, I have a tendency to not want to go to that place because I did go up against him a couple times when I was a state trooper and he was a young buck, thought he was out of Chapel Hill and thought he was, he was something, you know, walking around. I graduated from Chapel Hill, you know, UNC. I'm the man. That's me, you know. And Bobby Brown, never saw you play. I've heard a lot about you and heard people talk about you. And you played four sports and made a tremendous contribution to Alexander Central. But... I want to say that, in my opinion, one of the greatest contributions that you've made is serving the United States of America and the United States Army and made the military a lifetime profession. And I just want to say to you, Bobby, 
I don't know you, but I'm going to know you before I leave here tonight. Or oh, you're going to know me or what. You never can tell. But I just want to say thank you for your service because you retired from the military. And I appreciate your, uh, your service and what, you, what contributions you made for this country and the, the, the sacrifices your family made for you to be away and, and, and uh, be in the United States military. And thank you. Now, I get the distinct honor of introducing the one, the only, the most honest man in the world. He has, each morning, he goes to McDonald's at 4.15 a.m. He has oatmeal, raisins, and apples. And he thinks that's a good diet, but you know what he covers it off with? A sausage, egg, and cheese McMuffin. <laughs> and then he has a Diet Coke. I mean, come on, guys. We're working hard here. So let me introduce to you the man that's going to emcee this program tonight and get us started. The one, the only, the world famous, the voice of your Cougars on Friday Night Football, the one and only Rick Gilbert. Thank you, Larry. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. I was just looking around this place. What year did this thing open? 20 what? This held up great. Look at this place. I mean, it really is special. I remember when it opened. I think it was, gosh, it's probably somewhere around 15 years old and maybe more. I don't know, but it's just, it's held up so great. It's good to be here. I was going to slam the Dallas Cowboys tonight, but they won yesterday. <laughs> Is there any group of people on this planet that put more dumb stuff on social media than cowboy fans? Even when they win, it's not real smart. They went away from the game just because we were winning. No, they went away from the game because you were winning by too much and nobody else wanted to watch anymore. And, you know, not all cowboy fans fit a profile. Most cowboy fans, at least, the stereotype is they're mouth breathers. Um, they can't spell the things they put on social media. But I learned a few years ago that Bridget Ryan was a cowboy fan. She doesn't, she doesn't really fit that profile, but she came up to me tonight and she said, you know where I'm going on Thursday? And I thought, well, you know, Thanksgiving. She's going to the Cowboy game in Dallas. So all my good Cowboy stuff, I couldn't use tonight. And that saddened me. We've been doing this for, gosh, I, this is like the, I think this is the 10th class, correct? That we've inducted. And I want to echo something that Larry said, folks. And, and by the way, I, I need to clarify this. My name is on the committee. I've never been to a meeting. <laughs> and that's the truth. Evidently, they need to get me on the email list when meetings take place. <laughs> but anyway, we do need, and we've got so many worthy, deserving, incredible athletes in Alexander County just that I know of. And there's some that I don't know of that maybe you do and people in the community certainly do. So we need to hit those nomination forms and get some people nominated and let's make this thing continue to grow because it, it serves a terrific purpose. It does some great work in the community. I think we're ready for our first inductee tonight and we're gonna go alphabetical order. Bobby Brown was born here in Alexander County in 1964. He spent the first part of his life here in the county before he joined the military after high school in 1982. Now, there might be a little bit of a typo here, but uh, we understand he graduated in 1982. He graduated from Alexander Central while here. He was a four-sport athlete, a member of the Cougar football team, baseball team, basketball team, and track and field. And I, and I admire that because I am one that believes that athletes 
should play as many sports as they enjoy playing. I think to concentrate on one sport is a mistake. And I think most coaches will tell you that. But with that said, he was a standout player for the Cougars in basketball and baseball. He earned all conference honors in both sports. Said to be one of the top hitters in Cougar baseball history. And according to his nomination form, he's a top 10 scorer in Cougar basketball history. After high school, he joined the Army, made the military a lifelong profession. He's retired now, and he resides in Columbus, Georgia, Mr. Bobby Brown. You know, this is a little different. We've not done this format before. I kind of like it. It's very casual, very laid back. Like your hairdo, man. How you get that to shine? <laughs> done like this. <laughs> I like it. Bobby, um, obviously, I don't know if you, do you follow sports today? Are you a sports fan now? I am. I'm still a fan. Are you? I am. What's your favorite sport? Baseball. Baseball's still your favorite? Well, since you're sitting here. And you are a black man. Why don't more black athletes play baseball? That's a constant discussion on the MLB network. What do you think about that? I think it's, a, it's not a lost art. It's just that we have to emphasize people that baseball is still here. And people in the community need to advertise that. And let individuals know that, hey, although you're black, you can go out there and play baseball. It's just I don't think there's enough emphasis in this area that uh, sort of pushed the league just like the other sports. What drew uh, you to baseball? Excuse me? What drew you to baseball in particular? So um, when I was young, um, I went to Hidden Night School, and I just wanted to fit in. And, and the things that they allowed me to do, the coaches allowed me to do, is play baseball. I had great coaches. Uh, Harold Odom was one of them, uh, and I had Larry Sharp, and and quite a few of them that the grooming. Gary Comer uh, taught me how to swing, how to, to field the ball. Uh, but uh, one of the things that I really uh, caught my attention when I was young is that I, I met a lot of good friends while playing. Um, Wesley Dill, uh, Monty Payne, Terry Fox, we were all ended up winning the state championship in 1977. And that was a wonderful feeling and uh, I, I have to give credit to, you know, some of the coaches that's not here anymore, like Bobby Dill, uh, Jeep Sherrill, Troy Sherrill. Um, Harold Odom and uh, Gary Comer, he's still around, but those are the guys that sort of influenced me to play baseball. What position did you play? I played first base and outfield. You look kind of like uh, Frank Thomas, the big hurt. Yeah, uh, that was years <laughs> ago. I was a lot smaller back then, so I'm not going to worry about that. So. Everybody, when they were a kid, and I know I had many role models, what you remember any one particular when you were a kid that you just admired and you wanted to be like? So, yeah, there was quite a few, but I have to give credit to my mom and dad. They taught me um, work ethics. They taught me perseverance. Um, and then when you go out there to play the sports, you go out there and you have a good time. And uh, I, there's players like Todd Thomas that played baseball, Danny Rector, Scooter Gritton, all those guys that I think probably deserve to be here uh, before I am. But uh, those are the guys that I looked up to and want to emulate. You ever, do you remember anything that one of your coaches, or anyone for that matter, gave you as a piece of advice? Yeah, I sure do. I think one of the coaches out there, the Coach Young, he's still out here? He's here. Coach Hunt, um, just to let you know, um, uh, he would yell at me like I was his son. And, and they actually gave me a nickname. <laughs> they gave me a nickname. They gave me the nickname of Bobby Dell. And people would come up to me and say, well, why did they call you Bobby Dell? I said, because when he yells at me on the basketball court, I was like his son. So 
Um, but he taught me uh, how to hone my skills in for the betterment of the, uh, of, of the team. And, uh, and I'll never forget you for that, Coach. And we appreciate you pushing me. Uh, although I didn't like all the running, but I knew it was for a reason. So uh, I ain't going to forget that at all. So. You played other sports, basketball. Right. I played basketball as well. So. Your basketball career. Now, what do you remember from your basketball career? Do you remember a game or a moment or in particular? Yes. I, well, one of the things that I, I remember is that, and I was, you know, think about this. I think we played Bunker Hill. Well, I'm not sure it was my senior year. And uh, there was just a play that the coach always drawn up. And uh, it, it called me to come from the top of the key all the way around. And then we didn't have like three or four seconds left. So I knew I had to hurry up and get over there. And the ball got to me and I shot the ball and the ball went in and we ended up winning. So I guess that's one of the, one of the highlights of my uh, high school basketball career. So. Do you remember, and obviously you went to school here at Alexander Central, and Correct. Uh, one of the things that we have some of the most rabid fans of any high school in the area. They're not always rational, but they're supportive and they're, they're behind you and you know it. Do you remember hearing the, sure the crowd cheer? So. Um, there are several folks out here that I can really appreciate. Uh, I'll be at the, uh, in, in the stands and, and then I hear people yell and cheer for us. Uh, there were Don, uh, Don Gibson, Stanley Gibson, Angie Gibson, Gail Moose, uh, Robin Tedder, uh, all those individuals, I still remember them being in the stands and yelling and, and giving us our support. So I uh, thank you for that. Uh, I appreciate it. And, just let you know that your that all the uh, yelling and all of the cheering gave us motivation to play. So thanks a lot. I read in your bio you're living in Georgia now. How did you end up uh, residing in Columbus, Georgia? So I was in the military and uh, did 20 years. And at the end of my career, I was trying to get back to close to North Carolina. And uh, I called my branch manager and I said, you know what, I want to try to get as close to North Carolina as I can. I said, there's Fort Bragg and there's South Carolina. I want to get to that location. They said, nope, you're going to go to Fort Benning, Georgia. So I said, all right. So I went to Fort Benning, Georgia. My wife came with me, Connie, my wife. Uh, she came down with me as well. And uh, we decided that my daughter is getting to the age where we want to keep her there. So we made that our final resting stop. So, and I'll still come back and forth like once a quarter, so we decided to stay there. And, we'll just be uh, glad you didn't up, end up in South Carolina, because that's just a place you drive through on the way to Georgia. <laughs> Absolutely. So. Do you remember, I mean, obviously this place has changed when you went to, to Alexander Central and back in those days, okay, you graduated 82, right? 82, correct. I'm trying to think. Um, who was principal then? Was Joel Blackburn still principal? Who Here. was it there? I, I think I had to go to redirection one time. I think it was Mr. Thurl. Okay. So Mr. Thurl was, was the principal at the time. I think I, uh, I got in school suspension because I wasn't supposed to come here until 10 o'clock and I was here early and I was just running around the hallways and he caught me. He said, oh, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm not supposed to be here until 10 o'clock. He said, well, you're going to read directional. Funny that you say that. The thing about it was is that I had a basketball game that night. So somehow I was miraculously like, able to play basketball. And uh, generally whenever, whenever you get in trouble like that, you can't. They suspend you. They say, all right, you got two or three days where you can't play basketball or any sports. But during that particular night, I was able to play. It has been my pleasure to have this conversation with you, sir. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you very much. Right, sir. Right. I heard of this guy when I was a kid, Gene Chapman. I, I remember... And I actually saw him play softball. Because 
when I was growing up, that's the only thing I knew about was a ball, a baseball, a basketball, a football. If we'd have had hockey around here, I'd have had a hockey puck. But I remember hearing that name. And I, I think about I, seeing him play, and I look at this, his bio here, and I remember when I was a little boy going to Taylorville High School and them wearing those caps with a T on it. I remember that. He was known as Chief, and I'll be interested to find out how that came about. He was a standout baseball player during his years at Taylorville High. Chapman graduated from Taylorville High School in 1957. He played for the legendary Alexander County Sports Hall of Famer, Pat Ganey. Following his uh, career, he joined a local semi-pro baseball team based in the county. He pitched, he played first base, he played center field. He was a standout. In one memorable game, in, this, <laughs> in today's pitch count era, this is hard to believe. In one game, he pitched a 16-inning game. They'd arrest the manager now. If he pitched. I mean, that is just, I can't fathom that. Didn't allow a hit for the final nine innings. Following his semi-pro baseball days, he became a prolific men's softball player. He was a member of the Adam Septic Tank team. I remember them. They wore green. He gave back to the community as a youth baseball coach and a member of the county's recreation board. Through his job with Crescent Electric, which I guess is Energy United now, he was instrumental in lighting several parks in the county, including Alexander Central High. He's a lifelong resident of the county, now retired, and he resides in Stony Point, Mr. Gene Chapman. My pleasure to meet you, sir. Thank you, Rick. Good I, to be here. I do remember you playing softball. Yep. Um, wow. I, I got to go back to this in the bio. We got to start with this because mm -hmm. this this is just the more you know about baseball, the more incredible it is. You were playing for the Statesville Owls, and you pitched a sixteen innings. Sixteen innings. And we had to quit on account it was a curfew. You, you couldn't play after 12 o'clock at night. We had to quit. But the next game, time we played that team again, we won that game in the 17th inning. I did pitch. You didn't go back and pitch the next day? No, no, definitely not. But uh, that was one of those big things that, the coach come out about seventh inning there and said, you think I need to take you out? And I said, I think I could go a little further. <laughs> okay, we kept pitching and kept playing. Nobody could score a run. In the last nine innings I pitched, nobody got a hit. That was one of them unusual no hits, let's put it that way. I would say. But it did happen, and I was there, <laughs> definitely there. I, I wonder, and there's no way to verify it and find out, it would be so interesting to know how many pitches you threw in that game. No, that, that's true. Well, Probably 250 probably or more. At least 200, so I don't yeah. know. You know uh, pitchers nowadays throw about 80 or 90 and they're ready to come out. That's so right. I don't know. But did, that, did you throw, I mean, nowadays pitchers are told, you go in, you throw as hard as you can, we'll come and get you. Yeah. As a starter, did you necessarily, you didn't necessarily do that, did you? No. Well, back then, we talk about 50 some years ago. <laughs> it's a whole lot different game now than it was yeah. then. Let's put it that way. It's changed completely to what it was then. So pitchers will go out. Now they pitch four, five, six innings. They're ready to turn it over to the bullpens and go on from there. And then, of course, 
He should be ready to pitch it two or three more days after that because he's not much or less loosened up. Let's sure. put it that way. Sure. Did you have anyone that when you were growing up that you admired as a ball player or anyone for that matter? Well, I admired all the ball players in Alexander County here that I played with. I played with Eford Waltney. I played ball with Jimmy Robinette, Dan Tarleton, Jimmy Sinclair, Robert Sinclair, Squirrel Thomas, Rayford Thomas. Now those guys, Robert's not in the Hall of Fame, but all the rest of them are in the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. But I got a lot of information from those. When you play with those guys, uh, you know, everything's pretty good. So um, they were good baseball men, let's put it that way. And, and I really enjoyed it. You played softball. How old were you? How, when you stopped playing softball, how old were you, Gene? Well, I played baseball till I was 36 years old. Right. And so that was sort of weaning off. All right. We started playing slow pitch softball. I played slow pitch softball for Adams and uh, them and maybe another team for 10 years. But I ended up playing with the Stony Point church team when I was 60 years old. <laughs> and they finally they quit playing, so I had to quit too. <laughs> That's amazing. It was a different world, wasn't it? It was. Do you remember some of your coaches, some of your, some of well, your coaches in baseball? Uh, coach Ganey was my high school coach. From my, uh, now he's known for basketball more so. Yeah, he was, uh, he was uh, a very good baseball man. And he taught me, he said, you're not nothing but a thrower. You're just a thrower till you learn how to pitch. You've got to learn how to pitch and set the batter up. You pitch to this batter, the first time he comes to bat, you get him out with a baseball, a fastball or a curveball. Next time he comes up, you're supposed to know what you got him out with, where he hit the ball, if he hit it, and all that kind of stuff. It that was analytics little... before analytics. Well, that's thinking baseball. That's not just playing. So that, right. uh, that cut to just throwing out and being a thrower, in other words. Let's put it that way. He was very good. And uh, I had another occasion with Mr. Uh, Barefoot. He was my coach sophomore year. My first year, first game I ever pitched for the high school was right up here. We were playing in Newton Conover. Mm -hmm. Coach told me before on Monday, we were playing on Tuesday. He says, you get a good night's sleep. He said, you're throwing tomorrow. I said, okay, no problem. Get on the mound and start the game. First two batters up, walked them. Here comes Barefoot out of the dugout. He said, what's wrong with you? You know you got to throw strikes. I said, coach, I'm a little bit nervous. He said, nervous, heck, how could you be nervous? He said, look at those guys over there in the dugout. Just take a look at them, okay? They put their pants on one leg at a time, just like you do. So that's all you got to do is throw the ball. <laughs> and let me continue on this just one more minute. I didn't throw another pitch. The shortstop come in behind the guy at second base. I wheeled and turned and picked him off. Okay. Got back up on the mound. Going to throw a pitch. Didn't throw. Wheeled and turned. Picked the guy on first. And I said, well, I'll just walk him and pick him off. <laughs> you know? I love it. I and love that, it. That was Coach Barefoot told me how to put my pants on. Let's put it that way. I love it. The old, I remember as a little boy, the old Taylorville High School baseball field. And now, I don't know, in left field, there was a hill. Left field was a mile away. Yes, it was. <laughs> and there was, there was a hill. Yeah. You went up this hill yeah. because we played there in middle school. Yeah. And it's out where Central Park is located now, for those of you who don't know. It's down on the lower end where the baseball field was. Right. Because that was, you know, is Central Park was the old football stadium at Taylorville High. Right. 
Sure was. How, and this is, might be a personal question, but I remember watching you play softball, and I always thought you were, you were, you were rail thin. How much did you weigh when you played? Uh, probably 160. When I graduated. Believe me, that's rail thin. Yeah. When I graduated from high school, I weighed 155 pounds. Yeah. Right now, I weigh 170 pounds. So I'm not too bad a shape, let's put it here. <laughs> You're great. You're doing great. Gene, it has been my pleasure. I could talk baseball with you all night. Yeah. Pleasure. Pleasure, sir. Congratulations. Well, thank you a lot. Thank you, sir. I've been, really, I've been trying to think of something really smart-ass to say. <laughs> I've known this guy since we were kids, Joel Harbinson, and, and I remember watching him play high school football. I do. Local attorney Joel Harbinson Joel C. Harbinson, and I happen to know that the C stands for Klein. That was his father. He was a member of the Alexander Central football team, made an immediate impact on the program as they transitioned to one high school. As a member of the Cougars, Harbinson is known for scoring the first touchdown in what is now the crumbling edifice that is Cougar Stadium. I'm not going to let that die. He is also the first 1,000-yard rusher for legendary coach, the late Glenn Wilson, who, of course, is a Hall of Fame member in himself. He was a standout football player, a standout baseball player, all conference honors in two sports during the 71-72 school year. He enrolled at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. He was a member of the Tar Heel JV baseball team. He was a and his, his bio says a strong tennis player. That's an interesting term. We'll touch on that a little later. He graduated UNC Chapel Hill with a law degree, returned home to Alexander County to practice law. He still practices at Harbinson and Brixey in Taylorsville, served as the attorney for the county and the County Board of Education. Uh, he was a member of the County Board of Commissioners. In 1985, he was recognized by the Alexander County Recreation Department as a living legend in the history of Alexander County sports, Mr. Joel Klein Harbinson. Isn't this special? <laughs> yes, sir. Right. You're going to cross-examine me. <laughs> That's right. I, I do remember you playing football. I honestly do. Um, I remember watching you play. I was not yet in high school because you're considerably older than I am. No, that's true. Um, and you gave me a clipping from the Taylorsville Times recently. And I think Kermit Teague wrote the story. He did. He was the writer then for all the sports in the county. And something just <clears throat> stood out to me. Shifty tailback Joel Harbinson. <laughs> well, shifty. It went from shifty to shiftless shifty. somewhere. That's right. That's right. Uh, I'll, I'll take either one. <laughs> One thing that they will never be able to take away from you, you were the first 1,000-yard rusher. We've had a lot at Alexander Central. You were the first. I had a, you, you'll see tonight I've got John Watts here. He was the statistician. So I actually had, what, 1,002 yards. <laughs> and I scored 101 points. So he's, he was helping me. 
I understand. Along the way. So I understand. And that record stood for one year. So uh, I know it was broken. Bro I know. I was going to say. Go ahead. The legend. Larry Robinson. That's right. He was my sidekick the year before. He was a, uh, a year younger than me. Right. And so that was the reason I got a lot of yards because of Larry. He was a great blocker. And uh, the next year, he got it because he had a better blocker that year than me. <laughs> so I was tickled for it. He gave me a thousand, and I left, gave him a thousand. I remember you told me this fascinating story that you were also the kicker. And you don't see straightaway kickers anymore. The Lou Groza. Straight head, straight, not soccer. We weren't soccer. There were no soccer style. No soccer kickers. Style. Well, I don't think soccer was as invented then. But, <laughs> but do uh, you ever? Do you have any idea what ever happened to your old square toe shoe? No, I thought about that. Uh, I was going to get it out, and after fifty years, try a field goal. <laughs> and uh, a guy came up to interview me for the bar association because he was interested in sports and stuff, and he'd heard about this. So he wants to take a picture out there. So I took a football on the tee and had my shoes on. I said, I'm going to reenact this. Right. It's been 50 years, but I think I can kick a 25-yard field goal. So I gave it the old college try. If it went 10 yards, I was lucky. <laughs> and then it didn't go much further back then. No. It was a 25-yarder, and it was straight. I know you're a huge sports fan. Talk about some of the people you admire in sports, or did admire as a kid. Well, one of the questions was, they gave us, who's, who's your role model? Yeah. Well, it was my two brothers. Phil uh, uh, was 10 years older. Mark was five years older. And so there was never any sibling rivalry, and I was lucky to get their benefit. Both played here at Taylorsville High School. Mm -hmm. Phil played with Mickey Marie and Rick Sherrill. And let me say, Mickey Marie and Rick Sherrill, I remember seeing them play. Two meanest players I ever saw play. <laughs> you did not want to get in their way. But I mean, Mark, he loved, nobody loved baseball more than Mark. No, that's very And so true. when I was coming up, they played baseball and football at Taylorsville High School. So. They worked with me. They taught me fundamentals. Phil went on to, be, to coach baseball 30 years at East Rowan High School. Probably one of the best coaches I'd had in my life is when I played for him in some youth league games growing up. Mm -hmm. But uh, those two really, uh, without them, uh, I would not have learned anything about either sport. I know you have so many vivid memories and that's one of the great things about sports i really believe that you you gir you earn friendships you have memories that last the rest of your life now sometimes the, as you tell the stories as years goes on they're a little more spectacular than maybe what reality was it's better but i know that you had some special moments at First Taylorsville High, and then Alexander Central. Talk, tell me a little bit about when you, and I know you, you know, I've talked about this. You went half a day to school right. when Alexander Central opened because this place wasn't ready That's until correct. after Christmas. That's correct. So the first, I, I did two years at Taylorsville High School, uh, two years at Alexander Central. And uh, yeah, that first year, School wasn't built. We went to school from one to six. The elementary went from eight to 12. We practiced football in the mornings. Yeah. So, uh, I, you know, I, I'm very fortunate. And I certainly thank my parents for everything they did for me and supported me, but they conceived me at the correct time because I came through in football with the best group of linemen, and I've seen them play ever since, that ever went through, in my opinion, Taylorsville 
and Alexander Central, and as a running back, you know, That's awfully that, nice. that means everything to you. So we, you know, I had two great coaches in high school, and they coached me exclusively. I had Dale Yunt, who's here tonight. Dale was our uh, varsity, my varsity baseball coach. Uh, Glenn Wilson, of course, was football. Uh, I, I started this Hall of Fame track with the first game we played at Newton Conover. And Coach Yunt started me at shortstop as a freshman. And I appreciated that. Cold, windy day. I made three errors. We lost 23 to six. <laughs> By the, before the game was over, I was praying to God, don't hit me the ball. But it always finds you. Yeah, it'll find you in that <laughs> situation. So I'm going home on the bus and I'm thinking, you know, here I am. A, it, I was one month removed from my 13th birthday. Right. And so I'm having this bad game and Coach Hunt, uh, he won't remember this, but I will. Uh, as I was getting off the, the bus, he said, I started you for a reason. Okay, well, I, I thought, was he sort of throwing up my face that I didn't do a good job? <laughs> and then when I thought about it over the weekend, it was, you know, he felt he was confident in me. And so I had to, at that, that was a very big turning point for me to, to then become aggressive. And we happened to play them the next week at Taylorsville. Mm -hmm. We beat them about the same. I got eight chances, threw eight people out. But only because I think he instilled that confidence in me to be a great. And then at that point, I was saying, hit me the ball. Yeah. Hit me the ball. Come on, I'm ready. Hit me the ball. So that, that was a very memorable moment. It wasn't my best games, but that was memorable to me. You got to tell about the kick that won that game against then Marion. Okay, we were the first year of Alexander Central, and I was so proud that finally we had put all the high schools and communities in the one school. And everybody thought, man, you know, and we just integrated a couple years before. So everybody right. said, man, you're throwing all these high schools together. Stony Point hates Hid Knight. Hid Knight hates Stony Point. Everybody hated Taylorsville High School. And so it's gonna be a mess. But that first year, everybody was very proud to be Alexander Central. I mean, and that's, that was the, and we never had one problem uh, in that year. And the thing that helped, I thought, was that we, our first football game was before school started. And we beat Wilt Central, Alexander Central's first game, beat Wilt Central. Uh, Brent Eisenhower's here. I think he's, he scored the first touchdown ever for the the Cougars. Uh, uh, and so it just built up. We had a ye year where we did play in a championship against Marion, which was Glenn Wilson's high school that he went to. Right. So we go up to Marion and, and uh, it's six to six. Brent had scored on a pass. Uh, which and, didn't happen that often. No, we didn't pass, pass a lot. Right. Glenn Wilson was not a passing quarterback. And, and when Steve Jarvison was, was a great player, just not we didn't have passers. So you have bad we were at passers. I was a second string quarterback. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't going to do it. So we're up there, and Brent intercepts a ball, and we take it down, and, and, and we're on like their eight-yard line. Okay, we're ready to score, do something. 6-6. Six, six. And so uh, we don't move it at all. So it becomes fourth down and goal at the eight yard line. Well, I'd never attempted, a, I, I kicked extra points. I'd never attempted a field goal in my life. Not in practice. I mean, we never got together and said, now we're gonna practice field goals, people. We're gonna, no, no, it was just extra points. So uh, Coach Wilson, it's still hard for me to call him Glenn. This is just the coach. Uh, calls us over and he looks at me and says, you think he can kick a field goal? And of course, of course I'm going to say, well, yeah, you know. So I kick it. It is a low line drive. 
it barely makes it over the goalpost, barely makes it inside the goalpost. In fact, the refs were looking at each other like, is that good? Is that? <laughs> and so finally they went, that's the only field, and I was a junior that year, that's the only field goal I ever attempted in my entire life. Didn't kick one. Never kicked one the senior year. Never attempted one senior year. But sure. that won it that year. Conference. The conference championship. So the first year at Alexander Central, we won the conference championship. And under the direction of Coach Young, what, and this was 1970, okay? That was fall of 1970, spring of 1970. Coach Young and the baseball team, Gene Price is here. He had a big home run that put us in the conference championship where we played Lenore. And we won that game two to one. And uh, so Taylorsville High School went out as a conference champion. And Alexander Central started out as a conference champion. I was lucky to be a member of both teams. Terrific. So I was thrilled about that. But we had, I had great teammates. Glenn said the best advice I ever got was follow your blocking. And I did, because I, being small, slow, not talented, I was going to follow my blocking. And they, they, they're the reason that I'm here uh, in reference to football. Congratulations. Well, thank you, man. You'll forever be a Hall of Famer. <laughs> thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> thank you, man. Mark would be proud of you. Michael Mickey, Michael Mickey Marie is a 1963 graduate of Taylorsville High School. We keep going back to that, right? He was a member of the Bears football, baseball, track and field teams, and he was revered as a leader of the Bears football team and also shined for Taylorsville on the baseball diamond. Following high school, he played collegiate baseball at Lees McCray. After two years at Lees McCray, he attended Pembroke State University. I think it's now the University of Pembroke in Eastern North Carolina. He is a member there of the school's Wall of Fame and Wall of Presidents. When he graduated Pembroke State, he entered the world of public education. He served as a teacher and a coach for 10 years, served as a football and a baseball coach at Pembroke High, later coached football and basketball at Tar Heel, I'll have to ask him about that, and Shalote High School. I know where Shalote is. He later became an administrator and served as principal at West Junior High in Bethlehem and retired from public education. In 1983, he joined the ministry, earning a Master of Divinity from the Southeastern Seminary at Wake Forest University. He still serves as a minister and is currently the pastor at Stony Point United Methodist Church. Moore and his wife currently reside in the Ellendale community. Mickey Marie. Sir, I got to ask you, where is Tar Heel? I've never heard of that. I thought I knew where every town in North Carolina was. Tar Heel is about 25 miles east of Fedville and about 60 miles from the coast. Okay. It's no longer high school. It's now West Bladen for the okay. county, Bladen County. All right, well, it's just 25 miles right. is far enough from Fayetteville. I mean, yeah. you try to get as far away as you possibly can. And they they had a little town office and they had these little tags you could put on the front of the car. It said Tar Heel. 
and they couldn't keep enough of them because every time anybody who went to Chapel Hill uh, came through, they wanted one of those. <laughs> That's right. And they had to keep ordering them. You played multiple sports, right? Yeah. Tried to. Oh, this applause I got just like on Sunday morning when I go in the pulpit. It's great. <laughs> Gene can tell you, he's one of my members. Okay. <laughs> what drew you to, well, first, what drew you to athletics? Well, it's hard to believe now since I'm a preacher, but when I was down in grades, I was a bully, you know. I, I mean, first, second, third grade. I mean, it was just playtime for me in the room, outside the room. And one day in the third grade, I go out, and there's some of these fourth grade boys over there they had a football, and I'd never seen a football. And I watched them, and so I went up to them, I wanted to play. Mm -hmm. And they said, okay. And so, first time, I didn't know the rules, but first time I got my hands on the ball, I just run over as many of them as I could, you know. <laughs> and I loved it, you know. <laughs> so, that's what drew me to football. Now, what drew me to baseball, my daddy, uh, he, was, he was a minister also, you know, later on, but... When he was young and, you know, raising a family, he played semi-pro baseball. Mm -hmm. And Mama would take us to the games. Mm -hmm. And Daddy and two of his brothers were on that team. And so, naturally, I, I liked baseball. And so, that's how I got, in, you know, involved in that. Did you grow up, which community did you grow up in Alexander County? Uh, I didn't grow up, well, I moved here when I was 14. Right. Okay, and so, it was, it was... Just, I don't know, it wasn't a community as such. It's just over here on the backside. You know where the cemetery is? You go up the hill and down the road there. Um, that's about all I can It's not very far from the box factory. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Role models, athletically or not, when you were a kid, did you admire somebody? Yeah. Uh, one fellow who was my neighbor, uh, Earl Yates. Uh, oh, he, he, was a, he was a big fella. And he was a year older than me, and, and we would wrestle out in the yard. And, uh, and we played eighth, seventh, eighth grade football together. He went on to Duke and was uh, all-conference, played for the Washington Redskins. I didn't get that far, but, you know. <laughs> but anyway, but besides Earl, my Uncle Buddy, uh, he was several years older than me, of course, and he played football for the old Rockingham Rockets. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember. That's, part, that's now Richmond County. Raiders. Sure. Anyway, uh, so being my uncle, you know, even though I went to the Hamlet Elementary Schools on Friday nights, you know, I didn't go see the Hamlet uh, Red Rams. I went to Rockingham to see my Uncle Buddy play. Sure. And they won the state title in 1959, uh, state 3A football title. But anyway, that's sort of who, you know, kind of like, when I was young, you know, sort of a, uh, I don't know if you call it hero worship or what, but you know. Right. But that was it. I'm interested in this. You spent years in public education, yeah. different places. Yeah. And then you went into the ministry. And over the course of years following sports, like I follow sports, that's happened a lot. Yeah. And that, that interests me how you can go from any kind of, well, athletics, education, you end up in the ministry. Yeah. How did that happen? Well, the best thing to tell you, Rick, is God put a calling on me. And for six years, I wouldn't do it. I really? Kept, I kept staying with public education. And then I finally became principal, what used to be West Junior High, it's now West Middle. Sure. And my goal really was to be a superintendent of schools. Didn't make it because I finally got so restless with this calling, I had to give it up and go to it. I, I mean, that's the best way I can tell Six it. years? R running from it for six, yeah. I mean, what I call running from it. But the Lord was pretty persistent. Yeah, he was. I mean, he'd leave me alone for a while. <laughs> but then, then the next time he'd come after me, be a little stronger, you know. And so, as a matter of fact, Jennifer Hefner right here, she, she was a student of mine at West. 
Uh, she was in the seventh grade when I, at the end of that year, I left and went on to seminary. And uh, anyway, but you know, uh, and I probably would not have been a coach. Uh, I was, I was you know, finishing at Pembroke at, uh, University and I had met this real pretty girl there. Uh, she followed me everywhere I went. I finally... I know uh, how that is. Yeah. I, yeah. So, uh, what it was, my good friend had a red 63 Chevrolet convertible. <laughs> and he would let me drive it. And she thought it was mine, I believe. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, but after, after my senior year and her, her sophomore year, we got married that summer. And uh, I had signed a contract to teach school in Robinson County. And uh, a guy named Tommy Martin, uh, football coach, they were starting a football program at Pembroke Senior High. And so he went down to the county office. I didn't even know him, but he went down to the county office going through the applications because he was looking for somebody to help him in football. And he came across my name as one of the applicants. And he talked the superintendent into hiring me at Pembroke on the condition that I would coach. You know? mm -hmm. So, you know, so I helped him, you know, coach. That's how I got into coaching. So, and while there, though, I met one of the most influential people in my life outside of ministry, and that was a guy named John W. Sampson, better known as Ned. Now, he's in the North Carolina Hall of Fame. Uh, you know, he, he was a coach there on the staff. And, it, and Pembroke at that time was an all-Indian school. I was teaching an all-Indian school. Absolutely. Lumbee Indians. Yes. And uh, as a matter of fact, one of the guys I coached, I'm still in contact with him. I don't know if these folks know. His name is Kelvin Sampson. Uh, He's in, now the coach Houston at the Cougars. University of Houston. Yeah. Has right. one of the best basketball teams in the nation. Right. Taught him all he knows. I mean, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know it anymore. So. What was your coaching style? In Were you a rah-rah type of coach? Were you or not? Uh, pretty much. I mean, I, You're I was a pretty fiery guy. Yeah, I was pretty aggressive. Um, you know, uh, the guys, if they didn't, you know, I don't know. I tried to instill in them as I as it's instilled in me. Uh, you, you know, you got you got to be yourself, and you never quit. You keep working hard and stay after it. I remember one day there at Pembroke, Victor L. Uh, he he was one of my split ends, and he I, I if they got a if they made a penalty in practice we'll say I'd make them run. Sure. You know? Well, Victor, a couple of times he got one of these crackback blocks, you know, and really a clip, and so I'd make him run, and I got so aggravated I said, Victor, run. He said, How many laps, coach? I said, You run, and I'll tell you to stop. Well. We got through with practice about an hour later, and we go in the dressing room, and one of our managers came up, little Keith, we call, he said, Coach, um, Victor wants to know if he can quit running. <laughs> I forgot him. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and to this day, though, he, I think he still gives me credit because he became an All-America in cross country. <laughs> he, he, he went on up to Pembroke to go to college, and he became NAIA, you know, and, you know, I, I said, you know, I, I think I helped him. I really did. <laughs> but anyway, um, but, you know, j just that coaching style, you know, in baseball, uh, you know, I, I believe in taking chances. I, I, I watch baseball. I set up. I'm a Dodger fan. I get so mad with Dave Roberts, you know. Uh, <laughs> as Gene was talking about, taking the pitchers out, you know. Anyway, uh, but my style was very aggressive, you know. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't, I didn't like to punt on fourth down. Yeah. I mean, you know, just uh, believe my defense can hold them. Of course, unless we were real, you know, that's pretty much it. So. Uh, What's your favorite sport? I guess it'd be to follow baseball. Right. To play was football because I loved because you were a bully. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and, and We've learned that. Yeah, and I go back to 1962, Rick Sherrill sitting out there. Now, I don't, did David Elder ever get here tonight? Anybody else David's here? Uh, we called him Hoss. 
the day we was all, I was big daddy. <laughs> Still am. That's what my kid, my grandkids call me. But anyway, but on that team in 62, we didn't have a lot of players, but we had some mean players. You know, I mean, I wasn't that mean compared to Rick Sherrill. I mean, <laughs> so, <laughs> and David, let me tell you something. For you. Dave, David, we, we played under, well, we had a terrible tragedy to happen. One of our players died when I was a freshman. Uh, Johnny Johnson was a senior, and he died, you know, had a heat stroke and died the next morning. It was, it was on Friday afternoon, late August. Our next, first game was going to be the next week. And uh, he died. And so everybody quit. You know, everybody quit except Jack Barnes. And uh, I don't know if y'all know Jack Barnes, but uh, Scotty Barnes, his wife, she's got a big ministry. But anyway, they finally got us talked to, enough of us talked into coming back. And we played the last four games. That was it. And we won one of them. But anyway, the next year, hardly anybody came out. We had about 18 players. Rick, he, he was a freshman that year. I was a sophomore. And we'd scrimmage half a line. We didn't have enough to scrimmage yeah. for. Anyway, but, and we got, we got shellacked that year by everybody because we were like JVs yeah. playing a varsity schedule. And David Elder, my best football player I ever played with, David Elder, uh, one night we were up at Morganton. Mike Lackey was a great punter. He punted the ball dead on the five-yard line. And so we, <laughs> we're on defense. David is the end, and I'm the tackle there. And they, they did a cross block on David and myself, and one of their backs went 95 yards for a touchdown. And we go trotting, jogging up the field to line up for the extra point. We go by the coach, Vernon Morrison, and he called us over. David, uh, come here, man, come here. He said, what are you all doing out there? <laughs> we said, trying to stop him. He said, what are you doing, trying to be cops? He said, you're waving them all by. <laughs> That's the, one of the great things I love about sports. Memory just like that. Yeah. It's, I mean, they, they stay with you forever. Yeah. And one thing I want to clear up here, I don't know, probably. My senior year, of course, we had a great team, great year. Uh, first game of the year, we played uh, uh, Will Central. They won the state title that year. We're the only ones beat them. Was that when, was that when Johnny Swafford was on the team? Was he on that team? Do you uh, know? Uh, John Swafford was, I believe he was a freshman. His older brother, though, uh, Ken Swafford. Okay. Was Ken? Uh, Ken was, uh, he, he became the singer, became known as, uh, oh gosh, I, Oliver, yeah, Oliver. Oliver yeah. Swafford, sure. Yeah, yeah, okay, he was, but anyway, first of the game, uh, you know, we, we had the ball, <laughs> and we had to punt. James Moose was our punter. I was the lone person back there in case somebody broke through. Well, about four broke through. <laughs> and I began to try to figure out which one I'm going to try to take, you know. And all of a sudden, whack, the ball hits me. Now, everybody said it hit me in the tail. But I know where I, it hit me in my back. But anyway, it bounded down to the three-yard line. We all turn around, run down there trying to get to it, you know. And so uh, somebody fell on the three-yard line. And we held them. We held them. They did not score. Well, when we finally got to the dressing room at halftime, Coach Russell Cotton came up to me, and he said, Mick, you okay? Said, yeah. He said, okay, I, I was just concerned. thought you might have had a concussion. <laughs> <laughs> so saith the bully. It has been my pleasure, sir. Congratulations. Yes, sir. My pleasure. Thank you. If I can get up. Thank you, sir. I was I was interested. That was fun to do it that way. I think that's a really great format to sit and have a casual conversation with some of these people, get to know them a little bit. 
Uh, I don't know who came up with this idea, but kudos. It, it's terrific. Who come up with this idea? Well, it's, it, it's just it's terrific. I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. Don't forget what this is about. It helps to support all sorts of things that are badly needed in this community. We've got so many incredible stories, like the ones we heard tonight, that are still out there. And they can't get in unless they're nominated. Once they're nominated, they're nominated. But they're just I know there's just so many stories out there. And I want uh, everyone to give a round of applause to these four very special people. They all had some great stories to tell. Folks, I hope you drive very carefully. Be, uh, thank you so much for coming. It's been a wonderful night. Thank you. We're not done. <laughs> oh, I thought when I got the check it was no, over. No, no, no. Mm -mm. <laughs> Sorry, just a couple more minutes. I do want to congratulate our, our new members and thank you. And thank you all for being here tonight and making this night so special. Um, I just have a few thank yous because we couldn't do this out without the help of a, a lot of people. And one I want to recognize uh, first is Deborah Watts, and she keeps us all straight, and uh, that's been her title, Keep Her Straighter. That goes way back. So thank you, Deborah. <laughs> Dr. Danita Dow Revis is the Director of Communications for the Alexander County Schools, and she's helped with our technology needs in photography. Jeff Cockrell, Randy Parsons with the auditorium technology and anything else we've we've asked for the stage set up so that's different this year and it's been great rick gilbert and wacb our master of ceremony and our radio publicity we have the taylorsville times lee sharp donnie pennell advertising and programs lena hager with photographies here tonight impressions uh, does our plaques medallions and we have t-shirts on sale in the lobby they're 15 dollars so please grab one on your way out and we also have, I want to thank the members of the Education Foundation and the Sports Hall of Fame Selection Committee because without those two groups, we couldn't do this. They do a lot of work behind the scenes. And I think that's all the thank yous. Um, you guys, if you'll stay up here, we're going to do a group picture. And then for any member of the Hall of Fame, if you're here with us tonight, if you'll please come up on stage. We always like to do a large group picture with the entire class of anyone that's here. So thank you all for attending. <laughs>